What's up, y'all? It's me, Rhonda. What's up, y'all? It's just Rhonda, and I'm about to talk about Ready to Love. Who is your favorite artist? Like, who would you say you, I, I don't want to say influence, but I think, you know, we all influenced by things that we like. Can I say two? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, Drake and J. Cole probably influenced me the most. <sighs> okay. <laughs> I asked the question, so I got to accept the okay. answer. Okay. Um, What's the first three songs on your playlist? Back Outside Boys by Drake. Not Drake. <laughs> I don't think you like it. I do. I can't I tell. What te no tequila is like sweet. You know what I mean? You just gotta man up. Feel I me? don't drink tequila and I don't man up. What's up, y'all? It's just Rhonda. The ladies of the R H O C are back. We're gonna talk about it over here. Before we start, like the video, subscribe to my channel, and yeah. The OC is back. I started watching it last season and it I got irritated. So I left them alone. They got on my nerves. I stopped making them a priority. But this episode, season 18, we're going to get into episodes one and two. Squish them together. Shit's getting popped off. Um, This episode starts at the reunion. I can't remember if I watched the reunion or not, because like I said, they was irritating me a whole lot last season. But Shannon is on the, you know, couch defending how she, you know, don't drink as much as they, you know, claiming that she be drinking. And then 10 days later, we hear Kim Pye reporting on how she drove her drunk self into somebody's house. Now, I remember when this happened. Um... Now that, you know, the season is back, she got to discuss it. Everybody is discussing it. The ladies are sitting around deciding and discussing Shannon and her drinking. I feel like some of them are, you know, not really in a position to be so judgmental, Tamara, Emily. Because y'all be acting, you know, drunk and stupid. Tamara, well, you was throwing napkins at that lady and having apologized for being drunk like by episode three of last season. So anyway, you know, it's it's Shannon got in trouble and we're going to have to talk about it. Um, Tamara and Emily and Jen are over to the gym. We saved the gym to be sitting around holding on to, you know, what? I don't get it. They've been doing this. Love and Marriage Huntsville. Love and Marriage Huntsville has been doing this, but they keep being at the gym, sitting around with their makeup on and not, you know, working out. The gym just doesn't seem like the best place to film. Anyway, here's Tamara and Emily. Emily, um, girl, she back. She doing what she do every season. She be insecure about being bigger than the rest of these girls. So, you know, what did she do? She lost 40 pounds. She was on just a little bit, not too much, just a little bit of Olympic. And she had got some lipo in her arms and she'd been killing it at the gym. When you think about it, like, what does that sound like a recipe for, like, on the inside of your body? I'm going to take this little bit of Ozempic. I don't know what the hell Ozempic does to your body on the inside, but you know, all y'all look like saggy faced and unfortunate when you take Ozempic. You'll be skinny, but you know, it's, it's not a good look. Lipo in your arms, I guess, girl. I feel like Gina, you know, she's bigger than them. She's not big. They look a fool too. So I don't know. I don't know what her goals are, but this is always where we start with her. Anyway, I spent too much time on that. Tamara over here pretending like that she's being so supportive of Shannon as a friend. The whole time she talked shit and spreading rumors about the lady behind her back. Now, I guess they had this Trace Amigos thing. Who is the Trace Amigos? That's Shannon and Vicky and Tamara. And what is the Trace Amigos based on being drunk? Because they was down in, where is Vicky's spot where she be saying woohoo, Mexico, Cabo, so wherever Mexico they go to when they go on vacation together. And they be over there doing a whole lot, being drunk and naked and, you know, wilding out and woohooing. That's Vicky. That's a thing. Woohoo. That's when the party is turned. But, you know, when you run your car to a house, it's kind of hard to do. I don't know what they was touring as the Trist Amigas. I wouldn't probably go see it. And I don't know what it is. But 
they had tickets sold and, you know, they had to cancel that because, you know, too much alcohol involved in Shannon over here DUI and things. And so to me to cancel it, you know, seems like a pretty good idea. Now, whatever Tamara was talking about with Shannon sneaking alcohol and all of that, I Tamara be lying. So I don't know. That sounds like a lot. Does Shannon have an unhealthy relationship with alcohol? Mm hmm And this incident here, you know, thankfully nobody got killed, but I tell you what, it's definitely uh, wake your ass up and maybe realize that your relationship with alcohol is bad. And men too. Seems like you and Alexis have the same taste in men. Because from what I remember, Alexis' husband was kind of controlling and kind of ain't shit. Just like this guy, John. So it doesn't surprise me that Alexis is over here like, oh, my man, my man, my man. She used to do that before. Walk around in a bikini with her titties hanging out talking about Jesus. That's why Tamara was named her Jesus Jugs. Anyway. Shannon is downside. She her girls are off to college and she got a little condo by the beach because Shannon needs to do, you know, chill things. I'm not mad at it. She's renting. It the people say the uh buying houses out there in California is ridiculous. So I feel like it's ridiculous everywhere, but <clears throat> that's what I forgot to mention. We're gonna call this episode. Everybody broke except Heather because there's a lot of brokenness going on over here, but we're gonna keep going anyway. Can her condo is cute, so you know, for if she can afford it, and it don't seem like she's stressed out financially nowhere in her life, so it seems like until she can find a house that makes sense, she's gonna go ahead and do that. And I feel like Shannon has moved around a little bit since she was married, but you know, when your money situation changed, lifestyle changed, but it looks really cute. Her condo by the beach. She's sitting and having a conversation with her daughters. She's emotional because one of them went off to school and, you know, her father took her and Shannon couldn't go visit because she was over here in trouble dealing with the situation that she found herself in. And she's embarrassed because she's 59 years old down here running her car into a building based on an ain't shit nigga. That's what we do, child, girl. At least she's comfortable over her crib. She need to call that doctor that she goes to, her woosah man. She can't woosah and then drink tequila, vodka, or whatever the hell she be drinking. Her friend, her daughters is like, you, you know, you have a habit of attaching yourself to people that are not necessarily good to you, i.e. John, they daddy, Tamara. The rest of them, I don't know. I'm still pledging Emily and uh, Gina. For me, they're not. Hell, I'll take one Vicky for the both of them. And I ain't really used to couldn't stand Vicky that much, that much. But anyway, especially Emily. Shannon said the ladies haven't reached out to her. Not None of them. But from what I remember, like, they was not in a good place. Her and Heather, she let Tamara, you know, dupe her into not being cool with Heather. Emily, she hates Heather because she's jealous for whatever reason. Uh, maybe because Heather's... Mm, mm, uh, anyway, she wasn't in a good place with the girls. So it doesn't surprise me, you know, that they haven't reached out, especially now that they're they have dug Alexis Bellino from wherever they dug her up from. And so I guess Alexis was over here suing Tamara and um, Shannon and it cost her a lot of money defending herself. She said it was her husband, but, you know, she was involved in it, too. But now, you know, that she's on the outs with everybody, they have, you know, embraced Alexis back into the group, who also just so happens to be dating John, as if you want to be bothered with that shit. And you're trying to be a uh, sober, geez, that'll make you want to have a drink. Shit, be careful in this environment. I couldn't stand Alexis before, and I don't like her now either. 
Um, Heather and Terry are doing hair. Heather and Terry, rich people shit. They buying houses and they selling houses and they're getting condos and penthouses and, you know, remodeling houses. That's what they do. 20 million, 30 million, 40 million, 60 million. You know, that's their kind of conversation. I can't relate. I want to know how much titties is he doing? Why does they have so much money? There has to be some other kinds of investments in here. And when you just throwing around 20 million, 30 million, 50 million, and these other people over here can't find a house big enough to get a room for the kids. I'm curious, Terry and Heather, what y'all got going over there in California? Have you seen the little girl on the internet that says California is fancy? I love her. Fancy California. Why is California so different? Uh, we don't know. Because California is a fancy place. They call it Fancy California mm. because you're supposed to dress up fancy because people get married a lot of times there. And they have babies a lot of time there. So... You have to, like, dress up fancy because you're celebrating. Like, even if you don't know a person and she's having a baby or getting married, you still have to celebrate them to congratulation them that they're getting married or having a baby. So that's why we you wear don't... fancy clothes. We wear fancy clothes yeah. so we look, like, fabulous. Now Heather's planning a party, you know, she's like, I'm going to plan a party, give you ladies a clean slate to be my friend again. It's going to be fancy Heather DeBro style, so, you know, be ready. I'm here for a Heather DeBro party, and I'm not mad for her 20 million, 30 million, 40 million either. She says she got a house in Beverly Hills, and I think, mm-hmm, that would be interesting. Can you do it over there, Heather? I don't know. I kind of like it. Because these girls over here, like, it's getting evicted and things, and it don't make sense. If I'm getting evicted, I'm sorry, Heather. I don't want to go to your 20, 30, 40 million party. Make me feel bad about my situation. Anyway. Gina goes over to Emily's house because they're best friends. They gossip about Shannon, but, I mean, let's be clear. Wouldn't we all be gossiping about Shannon if we caught up and been like, girl, you know they said Shannon ran her ass into somebody's house. That's how it would go. So I'm not mad at that, honestly. Just, you know, you're doing it on camera, so be careful. So Gina is breaking up with Travis. Now, this is interesting how she's working her way out of this um, amicably. They've been together for four years and he's not divorced. And I don't know what word she said. She, is he divorced? No, he's butrified. Butrified. Some words I don't usually hear people say. What does that mean? He's butrified. He's not divorced. Um, What's your name over there in Huntsville? Trisha. Trisha. You should not, you should just walk around for the time being until you're divorced saying that you're not beautified. To be feuded or whatever it is. I was like, he's not what? Anyway, he got kids. She got kids. Some kids ain't little no more. These people need their own space. And they together cannot afford no house over there in Orange County, but the people say California is ridiculous. So that's not surprising. And I don't know what he's not doing over there, not getting a divorce and being perfutified, but that lady is causing stress, you know, in her relationship, his wife, because that's what we're going to call it, his wife. We can't be an ex-wife without a divorce. So I think Gina has a new job. She's a real estate lady now. And she's going to, you know, be able to go ahead and afford a house just enough size for her and her children so they can have their own room. And if, Ta what's his name? Travis. If Travis doesn't have enough money to, you know, do what uh, this girl, uh, Jen, is over here doing and get evicted after 30 days of $24,000, I'll look it over there in a minute. 
Anyway, she thinks that they should just live separately. They're not breaking up. They're moving separately. They're, you're breaking up, but it's whatever. So, yeah, this girl, Jen, is over here having some problems. She owes $24,000 in back rent. And I'm like, well, how much is the rent? So I guess her ex was paying the bulk of the rent. And then the lady over there, landlord, said, I only got your part. But I guess her ex is probably like, she got a whole new man over there. Like, why am I paying the bulk of her rent? You pay for it. Or have him pay for it. But 24000 seems like a lot of money to pay to somebody who you are no longer married to. And she got five kids. So she needed a nice, fabulous house big enough for her five kids to be in. She said her father is paying her legal fees. That's probably a lot. Why are y'all still married? Y'all ain't used to be fluckled and be fucked it too? Be whatever she said it was. Beefocated? You, you, you beefocated? Dang. And then the yoga, she says she's only making $50 a class. And I'm like, I don't know how many classes of yoga you're teaching, girl. I make more money than that. And I know I can't afford nowhere near $24,000 in rent. I mean, she's used to living comfortable. She might get up. I don't know, like, what the yoga lifestyle, but you, do you have a yoga gym or, you know, I don't, girl. You better quit playing. Ryan said you can move in with him. I mean, I, you're being evicted. I don't see how you have any other option. You could go stay with your mom and daddy, but I don't think, I don't know where they live. And it kind of doesn't matter. Oklahoma, they said, yeah, go to Oklahoma. I mean, girl, you can move in with Ryan, but you're going to have to figure out something other than the $50 um uh, class yoga thing. You're going to have to figure out something, girl. I don't know what it is, but seems like you have time to figure out something. Just saying. Heather and Emily and Alexis meet up for drinks at some little restaurant. And Alexis is telling the story about her and her Johnny J fell in love. And then I, they was over at the quiet woman and they looked across the room at each other. And, you know, he came over to her and, you know, they looked into each other's eyes and it was just love, you know, immediately after that. And she was like, Emily, so I had heard like something a little while ago, how you was talking shit about John on somebody's podcast. Emily was like, yeah, I said he was a douchebag. That's what I said. Uh-huh. So the people said that Alexis only been dating him for a month. And after one month, she wants to come over here and confront all these ladies about this man that was acting a fool, calling them names and being a douchebag because that's what he is. Did you help him get his new teeth? That's what Vicky did. Help that man get his new teeth. Um, this is what, you know, we obviously all can see. John very well knew that Shannon was over there, you know, in a lawsuit situation with Alexis. So he knows for sure who Alexis is and how much, you know, pain and stress and drama she's bringing to this lady's life. Right. They broke up. After she ran into that house, I feel like she was like, first thing to do, separate yourself from John because this ain't good. He got me out here wilding out and running into things. Y'all just need to get drivers, I tell you. But you know, this was a different situation. She said she went over there. They was arguing and what have you. She was tipsy. She wanted him to know she was pissed off and she put her foot on the gas and lost control of the car. Sounds about right. Anyway, um, Alexis wants to be on this show, and I think they concocted this idea of, you know, if we're a couple, we can come back on there and, you know, get Shannon all bent out of shape. You know, some loser shit. Sometimes you got to just let people like that, like, you know, enjoy each other's company because they're going to turn on each other. That's how that goes. Tamara has this moment where she gets a tattoo with her daughter. Seemingly, you know, her daughter 
has not been allowed to film, but now she's 18, so she don't have to ask her daddy's permission. And Tamara is doing what she do, using this opportunity to be like, see, I told you, me and my kids have a great relationship. I mean, maybe you try to get that girl to talk about her father. She said not doing that. You know what I'm saying? So she's used to you and how you be performing and things. And she wasn't about to let you drag her into it. She said, if you want to go over here with her and get this tattoo and bring your film film crew, then you could go ahead and do it. She's okay with that. But don't be asking her a bunch of questions and expecting her to have a whole lot to say. Because she did not. I just want to get my tattoo of the thing on my arm. Okay, it's time for Heather's party. Um, Gina brings the new girl, Katie. And Emily and Alexis are together. And I'm like, how did that happen? Because I guess, child, somebody had to ride together with somebody. Maybe uh, Gina's like trying to get to know Alexis and see what's up. Um, you know, Gina and Emily are haters, especially when it comes to Heather's parties, because Heather's fancy and, um, you know, they're both jealous. Now, Gina is upset with Jen because she had vouched for Jen to get this house. And she didn't run no credit check on that lady. And maybe she should have run a credit check on that lady. That's all I'm saying. Because, you know, you're brand new with this. Some stuff you should not, you know, necessarily have to. Do, do you do not know the lady only works for $50 in yoga class? It just seems like not a smart thing to do. Especially at such a high um Price point, you know what I'm saying? If the lady's rent was like, I don't know, $2,000 a month, $3,000 even, you know, in, in comparative to what, you know, we got going on in this economy, then you might be like, mm, yeah, so how many months off is she? How much is this rent? And you vouch for her. Well, you shouldn't have done that because she couldn't afford it. And now she's getting evicted. And yeah, she walking around mad at the lady for getting evicted because you said it's just merching your reputation. In your new career. I don't be offering up discounts and things at my new job or trying to sidestep the program. And I don't expect my real friends to be asking me to do that, Gina. Apparently, Alexis and Tamara are cool. Why is that? Because Tamara's mad at Shannon. And so... Tamara always needs to make somebody her adversary. She doesn't know how to just like, you know, Shannon got drunk, mad her man, lost control of her car, rammed it into a house, then has DUI. And it's all like over the news and, you know, TMZ and, you know what I'm saying? Everybody knows about it. She can't hide from it because she's a public figure. And, you know, the embarrassment and to her daughters, you know what I'm saying? Which is probably a bigger hurt. Like she embarrassed from y'all, but she's really embarrassed probably from her, her girls. Cause nobody, no mother wants their kids to see them like that in that type of situation. So Tamara, what is you mad about girl? <laughs> Why are you taking this so personal that your friend, supposedly friend is having a rough time? And how easy do you think it's going to be for her? You spreading rumors. All of these things might have happened, but you know, she's in it. She's in the process of healing. That ain't gonna help her heal, friend. But but you know, Tamara is nobody's friend. So, like I said, even though Alexis cost her five hundred thousand dollars in some some type of lawsuit that you won, but did you because you had all these five hundred dollars thousand dollars worth of attorney fees that you had to pay for? But y'all good. Me, I'm with Shannon. We can't be good. <laughs> we ain't good, girl. Johnny or no Johnny. Heather has all these fancy pants things that she does at her parties that, you know, we all enjoy so much, except for Emily and Gina. Um, why is this lady Emily so nasty? She over here spitting stuff in her glass. Last time she had spit and cucumbers and stuff. You are so nasty, Emily. Got the nerve to be talking about somebody. You be drunk too over to the parties and things. But so while you talking about Shannon, you and Tamara both might need to slide over to a little, you know, rehab of your own type of situation. Some type of, you know, 
Shana came in there like, look, y'all ain't seen me. I ain't seen y'all. Y'all got Alexis over here looking like Jesus jugs in a Barbie suit. And so let's just get this elephant on out the room. We're going to talk. Let me, Alexis, come here. Let's talk for a minute. Let's don't pretend like we don't see each other. Now she said, I'm going to tell you the truth. You cost me $300,000 and I didn't appreciate it. I don't like it. Your name was on them papers. And so are we going to be friends? Probably not. <laughs> Heard a word. Alexis is like, yeah, I'm sure like, you know, whatever girl, because the man is mine. I took your man. That's why you're mad. I feel like, yes. I feel like it's both things. I was like, on top of everything that I went through with you, he went specifically to somebody that he knows I can't stand just to, you know, make me, I don't know why he feels like he needs to do this. Be on TV, I guess. You know, he liked the, uh, he liked spotlight. And that's not for nothing. Alexis looks amazing. I'm sure she's younger than Shannon. So that's just another little bit of salt on the wound. Like he done walk around like he got hot Jesus Barbie. Shannon, you look good, girl. Don't don't let that be a thing. Time uh Johnny J get done with her ass. <laughs> She'd be looking haggard. They go back to the party. This is episode two. Uh, Alexis stomps off and Shannon is like, hey, my, my money. And that's what they're over there doing. So Shannon is telling whoever she talking about, talking to, like, I mean, the lady cost me a lot of money. I'm not over that shit and I'm still mad about it. And so that's that on that. And Alexis is telling Tamara about how she just mad because I got her man. And I mean, do you think it's easy for me to be all over here with my, my boyfriend's ex? I mean, you wanted to go over there. So, I mean, it should be really easy because this is where you asked to be. She was already over here. Jen is very comfortable sharing with the ladies that, you know, she about to be evicted. So, I mean... <laughs> Gina is over in another corner mad because you know she's decided that this lady is you know ruining her reputation in her new industry of real estate I mean it was girl just don't do that anymore Heather has a question booth they said that they thought Heather should have put some money in there so this girl Jen can pay her rent and I'm like no she got her daddy in them for that. Why would I be paying her rent? I don't even know her like that, like that. We're going to have a question booth. So you get in the booth and you catch a question. Alexis, what do you want to do with friendships in 2024? Alexis, I just want to move forward with Shannon. We could put the animosity behind us. And, you know... Be friends together. Why? Were y'all friends together before? No. You cost me $300,000. And you smashing my ex? And you want to sit around dinner parties talking about details? Girl, get the fuck out of here. I don't want to be your friend. Tamara, what would you like less of in your life? And Tamara would like to have less friends that talk behind her back. And I mean, for somebody that talk behind everybody's back, that's what Tamara do. She talk behind people's back, but you are requesting more, less. you're requesting less friends that talk behind your back. Hmm. They're sitting around this lovely table and somebody asked Alexis about her promise ring. I guess she had posted it. She posted it on the internet like everybody else does. This man... Johnny J has given brought her a promise ring. Promised with a D. Don't say promise. Promised. He brought her a promised ring. After two months. That's nice, I guess. Shannon, Jen, and Katie get together. We're getting to know Katie. Katie is a sports journalist. Um, she's not really feeling Heather. I don't know what's going on there, but I'm guessing we're gonna find out soon enough. She's a Korean lady and she's adopted by an American family who didn't really, you know, give her too much of her Korean history. 
you know, that was missing in her upbringing. So she's got a 20 year old daughter. Her daughter is very much involved and interested in her history. So they learn it together, you know, about their heritage and things. That's cool. I like discovering things with my daughter. She has three kids from her first marriage. One of them is at school somewhere and the other one is just with his daddy and her her current husband have a six-year-old. Jen says she go ahead. She went ahead and moved in with Ryan and they asked her, well, what does Ryan do? And she says, Ryan does nothing. So both of y'all don't do nothing. <laughs> and y'all living in a place that costs $20,000 a month. Y'all scammers better stay off these reality shows, child. They said the man is a scammer. We gonna find out. Now, Gina is over here bring, blaming Jen for her lost business. And I'm Gina, stop it. Gina, you been broke this whole time. You acting like this lady is out here intentionally not um, paying her rent. She don't make any money. She doesn't even actually have a job. Now, I think the difference is Gina got a daddy and a Ryan to pick up the slack for her. Feel like that's making you angry. Feel like you don't like that. Because anybody who can't pay their bill is somebody you would sympathize with. I mean, it's okay to have a conversation, but I mean, girl, you did it to yourself. Be mad at yourself. You can't be giving out um, uh, homes to people that you haven't done a credit check on that don't work you know she don't work now you want to give her suggestions on how to teach her yoga class i don't care how many places she stand up there's only so much you can do like how many people does she need in the class <sighs> there's some math that needs to be done here 50 dollars a class emily shannon and gina meet up they got somebody who is it is it Emily? Emily. Emily done planned a, planned a flag football game. And so they want to go over there, her and Jen and Shannon, and practice and gossip. They want to practice flag football. They sitting there talking about how they don't like Jen, uh, John and how uh, Alexis going to find out for her damn self. Like, don't come around here after knowing this man for two months trying to tell us whether we should like him or not. We don't. We're not basing it just on what Shannon just said. We've met him. We don't like him. Shannon talks about her struggle with sobriety and, you know, and she apologized to Gina and she should have because she was really hard on Gina when, you know, Gina got, Gina didn't run her car into a house. That part didn't happen. But, you know, now she understands like how that whole shit can, you know, throw your whole life off. So Jen moved her kids in Ryan's house and then her parents came to visit. And um, how do they have all these kids and they don't work? Nobody work? And there's teenage sized kids? They eat a lot. Something is so very weird about it. It is. I'm really interested to find out what Ryan was over here doing. Um, Shannon and Heather meet up. Shannon and Heather go back and forth. They've never really saw it for each other. I feel like if they just let Tamara uh keep her out of their business, their friendship, they might go a long way. Tamara works very hard to put a wedge in between people that are getting along. You know, she's just always somebody somewhere plotting and planning and planning and plotting. I don't know why they trust anything that comes out of her mouth. I don't know why they consider her the leader, kind of. She just came back in there, like, still doing that thing she does. Are they scared of her podcast? I haven't heard it. I've only heard, you know, things that they may have said over there. So we'll see what happens with Heather and uh, Shannon. They be on and they be off. And I feel like it's going to always probably be like that. Child, they was just switching around and switching around. And this one's so now Gina and Emily and Katie are over at this little spot by the beach having a little lunch, a little talk about people, a little get together. They talk about Jen because this girl Gina is so upset that this lady can't pay her rent. She better find something else to talk about. Now, shoot. 
she finally has a meetup with uh, this girl, Jen, and she snaps on her so bad. And it was kind of not really ridiculous. Like, I get how she was feeling, but I'm like, who are you talking to? Girl, I would have slapped you out the seat. I'm sorry. She said she came over here with glam on and new clothes on and she ain't paying her rent. Well, girl, she on TV. But she doesn't need to get her glam done. She can't show up here. You showed up with your glam on. I think I understand what Gina is saying to some extent, but I also think that you are blowing this whole thing out of proportion. Like, okay, you helped her and, you know, she couldn't pay the rent. So that note to self, not helping her again. Her one, that one situation is not damaging to your whole entire career. You're like, she trying to take my career down. None of that is happening. You made a bad decision. Don't do that anymore. And I would say if somebody's mentoring you within your new situation, they probably said that, girl, always get a credit check. I don't care what it is. That's probably the advice that you were given. Don't be out here doing people favors like that. It's not going to work to your advantage. The end of the story. Now, she didn't got up and stormed out the thing, calling a lady stupid unnecessarily just doing a whole lot um next week they got flag football we gonna see hopefully nobody breaks any bones um alexis and Monona got a dog that looks like shannon's dog and they said that this lady's over here acting like a single white female um katie and katie and gina and sudden is here and so you know sudden is Katie's friend and this is like it's interesting she over here doing crossover a sudden name them name them name them I'm not a sudden fan so much but that was funny um and Gina's still bad so y'all like the video subscribe to my channel and we'll be here with the ladies of our H-O-N-C bye y'all